And good evening. Welcome. It is Thursday night, June the 14th. 2012. Welcome to Through the Mirror with Larry Sinclair. Hopefully my audio is sounding good tonight. Filling in for Larry tonight. I uh, Larry, excuse me. Larry will be in tomorrow night. He's taking the night off. You will have, I believe, Adam Kokesh on his show tomorrow night. So I am filling in for Larry this evening, and I believe I'll be filling in for Larry within the next couple of weeks as well on select days. So thanks again to Larry Sinclair for allowing me to fill in tonight. Uh, on the show, we will be joining, uh, we'll be joined by, excuse me, Wayne Matson, investigative reporter, WayneMatsonReport.com. I'll have him on in just a few moments. And at the bottom of the hour, I'll be joined by independent journalist Anthony Antonello, who will be talking about the NDAA. Uh, just recapping quickly, uh, Larry and I were at CPAC Chicago. Uh, I am uh, from the Chicago suburbs, so not that far from Rosemont, Illinois, where the conference took place. And ju- I have the same feeling as I did when I covered CPAC in Washington, D.C., along with Wayne Matson, who will be joining me in just a few moments. I, I had the feeling and I, ha- I felt sympathy for those conservatives that were out in Rosemont for the CPAC, conven- for the CPAC convention. Sympathy in the sense that they, these people are getting conned, conned by the establishment GOP. Now, uh, they have the intuition of being politically involved and concerned about their country, yet they're too busy watching corporate news, watching Sean Hannity and all these neoconservatives, reading the Weekly Standard and Bill Kristol and Tucker Carlson's The Daily Caller and Glenn Beck. Mr. Benedict Arnold, and they're being, they're being, they're giving them these messages that, oh, we, we just need to beat Obama. That was one of the big talking points at CPAC Chicago. We have to beat Obama. It's all about beating Obama. Make him a one-term president. Now, the nominee is going to be Willard Mitt Romney. It's going to be Willard Romney. And he's just like Obama. He is being funded by Goldman Sachs. He is pro Federal Reserve, pro cap and trade. And it's just like when Obama was running in 2008. Oh, we hate Bush. Anyone but Bush. Anyone but Bush. And look who we got. Barry Satoro, Mr. World Government himself. And he's, you know, our country is closer and closer to the world government every day. And now here we are four years later and we're at that same boat. And... Rand Paul was there, the big news from Thursday night endorsing uh, on Sean Hannity's program. Sean Hannity, who talked bad about his father for decades, same with Bill O'Reilly and Rush Limbaugh and all those other jokes. Uh, Rand Paul endorsed Romney. And by the way, he endorsed Romney, or Jesse Benton spilled the beans back on May 15th. And that uh, video, the whole audio of that teleconference is on the LS News Group homepage, ellisnews.com, and Jesse Benton said, yeah, Rand Paul's going to support the nominee. Obviously, it wasn't going to be his father, and so I was uh, able to ask Rand Paul on a couple of questions about the sanctions on Iran and Syria. He and his father diff- uh, have different opinions on that, and Rand Paul said, oh, the, the, you know, the, I had an amendment sp- specifying that this is not a declaration of war. So you can take him at his word for that. Uh, Asked him about speaking out for his father and his supporters and your supporters and why you endorsed Willard Romney. And then I asked him about Bilderberg. My pal Luke Rodowski at We Are Change asked him on Bilderberg about a year ago when he was running for, yeah, about a year, a couple years ago, I believe it was. And here you have Rand Paul talking about world government, how how this group meets in secret. And yet when I asked him about John Kerry's, involvement at Bilderberg and whether or not he violated the Logan Act, I get a no comment. And you can see that 27-minute audio, the raw, unedited footage on uh, lsnewsgroup.com, Rand Paul, think everyone's going to be mad at me. And he said that quote to a Ron Paul delegate who had asked him, you know, for a picture, Rand Paul asked him, do you think everyone's going to be mad at me? Already knowing that he's going to get huge, huge backlash because of this. And then I see Bobby Jindal, 
governor of Louisiana at CPAC, and I wanted to ask him a question on BP, the BP oil spill, two years later, and was able to get him following his speech, and it was, I guess, it's not ambush journalism, you know, I just got him as he was coming out, walking uh, the lobby of the Donald E. Stevens Convention Center in Rosemont, and I asked him, you know, what any charges going to be brought forth to BP? He said the Justice Department were opening an investigation, and his handlers were trying to push me off of them. And I asked him if the seafood's safe to eat, and he said absolutely. Now I'm joined by investigative reporter Wayne Matson of WayneMatsonReport.com. Wayne was out in the Gulf Coast a couple of weeks ago, actually at the end of April. And his article, and you can find it on WayneMansonReport.com, uh, April 30th through May 3rd, Grand Isle, Louisiana, special report two years later on the Gulf Coast. It's not the same. It's worse. So, Wayne, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, Wayne's out in Washington, D.C. in the District of Criminals. Wayne, how are you doing tonight? Good. Good to be with you. Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, I sent you the email. I'm unsure if you got what Bobby Jindal told me on Friday, but when asked if the seafood's safe to eat, he did say absolutely. The Justice Department is working on a case with British Petroleum. What are your thoughts? You were out in Grand Isle in Louisiana being there. What First, your thoughts on what Jindal said, that they're working on a case with BP and that the seafood is safe to eat. Well, seafood clearly is not safe to eat. I, I, in the article I wrote, I actually show photographs of some of the tumored uh, shrimp uh, being pulled out of the Gulf. Uh, one out of every 20 shrimp now have these uh, awful-looking ulcerated tumors on them. Now, if Governor Jindal would like to serve uh, those shrimp to his uh, family, um, he's welcome to do it, but even people who are long-time residents uh, of the uh, Gulf Coast um, said they'll never eat Louisiana seafood again. Based on what they've seen, uh, the uh, largest uh, seafood distributor uh, in Grand Isle and probably one of the largest in Louisiana, Blanchard Seafood, uh, closed up uh, not too long ago after three generations uh, uh, in that family of, uh, of fishing and distributing seafood uh, because um, they just can't uh, uh, sell that kind of uh, uh, seafood. It's, it's bad. Uh, we've seen other photographs of stores, uh, huge gaping stores on uh, fish and, and crabs now being born without claws, some shrimp being born with uh, four eyes. The reason that it's now obvious uh, what the effect of the oil and corrected has been is it takes about two years for the uh, food chain to be affected, and now we're seeing the mutation. Uh, at the very beginning, we saw a lot of dead seafood, but now we're seeing the long-term effects of, of the oil and the correct that was dumped by BP in the Gulf. But it's quite clear that Bobby Jindal is uh, owned and operated by BP, just like President Obama is. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Republican or Democrat, because... Um, uh, BP uh, has its lobbyists uh, and had given money to both uh, Jindal and Obama and lots of money. And we saw how BP was giving the orders to the Coast Guard and, and the uh, EPA during the, uh, the, the Gulf disaster, the oil disaster, and they still are uh, calling the shots. And uh, Jindal can say all he wants about uh, the Justice Department. Uh, 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 coming to some deal with uh, BP, but uh, BP offered uh, Mr. Blanchard, the owner of Blanchard Seafood, $25 million for his business, when in fact that business was worth in the billions of dollars. Uh, rather than take that money, uh, he closed up shop, and that's the effect. That's the real story. Uh, Jindal must be living uh, on another planet uh, if he thinks that the seafood is safe to eat and there has been no impact. On, uh, on the, uh, the seafood industry and the tourism industry, which uh, was heavily involved with fishing, uh, these industries have been decimated. Now, you're not the only 
reporter that is bringing the subject to light life it's just that corporate media isn't focusing on this gizmodo uh has an article bp oil spill aftermath eyeless shrimp uh clawless crabs and fish with oozing sores raw story gulf fishermen report eyeless shrimp uh, malformed fish hearts after oil spill and here's a discovery channel discovery news Mutant crabs turning up in the Gulf. All of these articles around the April time frame of 2012. And again, Bobby Jindal told me the Department of Justice already has one case open, still pending an investigation. Uh, we're coming up on a break in just a few moments. But Wayne, quickly, what else did uh, the Blanchard Seafood Company, what else were they t- uh, telling you when you reported uh, just a few few months, a few weeks ago, I should say. Well, they're they're well, hold, hold, hold the thought, Wayne. Hold the yeah. thought, Wayne. Here's the music. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We're with investigative reporter Wayne Matson. We're discussing the BP oil spill and Bobby Jindal telling us it's safe to eat the shrimp and the seafood in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll take a break. We're with Wayne Matson. This is Through the Mirror with Larry Sinclair. I'm Julio Rausseo filling in. Tonight he has the night off. He'll be back tomorrow night. I'm the LS News Group Chicago contributor. You can find me on Twitter at JN Reports. That's JN Reports. And you can find Wayne Matson, my guest, at WayneMatsonReport.com. That's WayneMatsonReport.com. Wayne, we're back. Uh, as we, as I asked you before the break, just what are the thoughts of these uh, fishermen, family-run fishermen or companies in the Gulf of Mexico? As you mentioned, this company, the Blanchard Seafood Company, turned down a pretty low ball deal from BP. Some would say $25 million is a lot of money, but as you said, this company is worth over a billion dollars. What else are their concerns while you were down there back in uh, the end of April? Well, they're, they're, uh, the, the shrimp boats and the fishing boats in the Gulf are, are still uh, snaring, uh, in some cases, huge tar balls out of the uh, Gulf of Mexico. I saw one uh, that was literally the size of a boulder. Uh, but uh, you, you just have to walk the beach uh, at Grand Isle. You can feel the oil, which is under the sand. Uh, what what BP is doing there now is uh, every uh, night uh, in the wee hours of the morning, around 2 and 3 in the morning, they come out with these uh, <clears throat> plows that plow uh, the oil under the sand, the oil that's washed ashore, it's still washing ashore, uh, tar balls, and then they basically grind it up with the sand so uh, you can't see it. And then, of course, they also pick up uh, the dead birds, the, the dead uh, marine life, uh, the, the dead sea mammals that wash ashore, uh, and they do this all under the cover of darkness. They've done this since the original oil spill, and they continue to do it to this day. Um, so the, the, the cover-up continues. Uh, now, the effect on the health of the um, people that uh, live in Grand Isle and, and the other um, uh, Gulf uh, communities, uh, people are sick, people have died. Uh, I talked to one uh, resident of, uh, uh, of Grand Isle who uh, he said last Thanksgiving he, he just started throwing up blood. Uh, of course, uh, the, the doctors... Uh, don't want to link these uh, illnesses to the oil spill because, frankly, BP's money has gone far and wide in the state of Louisiana from research labs that are giving BP a pass because their universities, LSU, Tulane, are, are funded by BP money or to the doctors themselves because the HMOs and the insurance companies are basically in bed with uh, BP on paying out uh, medical claims. Uh, so um, this, this is typical of uh, what we have when we have a corporate fascist dictatorship. The corporations are basically dictating to the regulatory agencies 
of the states of Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida uh, what they're going to regulate and uh, what decisions they're going to make. And that reaches right up into the federal government where the EPA and the Coast Guard and, and other regulatory agencies are basically taking their orders from, from BP. Uh, BP was, of course, responsible for this. With responsibility can be spread out to Halliburton, of course, and um, uh, Transocean and the other companies involved with Deepwater Horizon, but BP was the prime contractor. And, of course, in any case where you've got a uh, potential legal issue, it's the prime contractor that takes takes the responsibility. But we've seen BP do nothing but uh, shirk responsibility and with the active help of um, the federal government and the and the state government. Uh, Louisiana isn't the only state government that's uh, uh, doing this. So, like I say, it's it's Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida as well. Wayne, how how can BP literally get away with these types of crimes? And you just gave some great examples, and some people are probably wondering, why hasn't the Obama administration done anything to BP when Jindal told me the Justice Department are looking into a case, they already have one case coming up. I laughed inside, and I mentioned it during my, my Ustream coverage live from CPAC on Friday, that I, I you can't trust the Justice Department, especially with their crimes that they're currently committed. So there's, there, there, there's something more. How, how can BP have such uh, a huge control over Jindal, Obama, and this whole machine covering up this oil spill? Well, let's remember who the Attorney General is. It's Eric Holder. And Eric Holder is obviously a person whose background is, is a corporate lawyer. He covered up for Chiquita Brands uh, in Colombia when um, it was found out that the Chiquita Brands was hiring paramilitaries to basically go out and kill uh, uh, union leaders and, 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 and farm uh, worker organizers. Uh, he was part of that cover-up. So he's, he's a corporate uh, bred uh, lawyer, and uh, he of course is going to find common ground with a company like BP. He's of course always looking to see what he's going to be doing after he's attorney general. He'll go back into the corporate uh, law profession, and, and maybe he'll get a job with BP. Um, <clears throat> but um, but the the other thing is that Obama took more money from BP than any other candidate in 2008. He got much more money from BP than John McCain got from BP. So um, when that happens, of course, I think you're going to do the bidding of the of the company uh, that, that gives you the, the big campaign contributions. And Stanley Greenberg, uh, who, of course, is a uh, big Democratic pollster and, uh, right in there with the DNC, Democratic National Committee, uh, he's, a, he's a registered lobbyist for BP. Uh, so when Rahm Emanuel uh, was White House Chief of Staff, he was actually living... Uh, in the basement of Stan Greenberg and uh, Rosa DeLauro, his wife, uh, Congressman Kennedy. Was living Wayne, in the can, you, can, of can, you do one, can you do one more segment with us, Wayne? Sure. We're coming up on the break. Sure. All right. Thank you so much, Wayne Matson. We're going to get to that. That's interesting uh, bits of information right there. We'll get to that. We'll also have my other guest, Anthony Antonello, coming up in just a few short moments. This is Through the Mirror with Larry Sinclair. I'm Julio Noel Rosseo filling in for Larry tonight. It's the Rents Radio Network. Sign up now. It puts me in the mood to go to the golf or go to a beach and have uh, a frozen margarita and, and enjoy uh, the sounds of the water. But <laughs> unfortunately, our government is damaging everything. The, the, the Gulf of Mexico is destroyed. And you can't eat the seafood there. 
I would respect Bobby Jindal if he would have told me to my face, you know what, uh, the seafood might not be that safe to eat, instead of telling me absolutely. You know, I would, uh, I would uh, uh, respect Obama a bit more if he would have done something to BP, at least something, some PR move, but uh, he hasn't been able to do that. He's a puppet, bought and paid for. Welcome back. It's Through the Mirror with Larry Sinclair. I'm Julio Noel Rousseo, filling in for Larry. A final few moments with investigative journalist Wayne Matson of WayneMatsonReport.com. Before the break, Wayne, we were talking about uh, Barry Satoro, Stan Greenberg, BP's top lobbyist, and the sugar daddy, Rahm Emanuel. Continue. Greenberg uh, was a, you know, and still is a, a registered lobbyist for uh, BP, and when um, you know, Rahm Emanuel was chief of staff, he, of course, when he stayed here in Washington, uh, he uh, stayed in the basement of Stan Greenberg and Rosa DeLauro, Greenberg's wife, who's a congresswoman from from Connecticut. And uh, so here we see the, the ties that bind uh, and why these decisions were made, uh, giving DP ultimate authority uh, over the entire cleanup, when in fact it should have been uh, uh, the EPA, the Coast Guard, uh, NOAA, uh, the Interior Department, and, uh, and other regulatory and cabinet uh, departments and agencies. But that did not happen, and I think we see the reason why. BP gave Obama a ton of money in, in 08. Uh, I'm sure they're going to give him a ton of money uh, or already have uh, this election campaign. So um, this, is, this is where the breakdown uh, occurred, and it got to the point where uh, BP security was chasing uh, credential journalists away from covering the Gulf, even uh, threatening at one point uh, to uh, have the Coast Guard arrest a CBS news crew that was out on a uh, in a boat in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, sadly, uh, it's not going to get any better as far as coverage of BP's crime uh, is concerned, uh, because uh, we now know that uh, come the fall. The New Orleans Times pick unit is going to go down to a publishing schedule of three days a week. Uh, now, who's the first one uh, ones to go in a, in a cutback like that? It's the investigative journalist staff. So, BP must be breathing a big sigh of relief right now over the news about the pick, Times pick unit. Uh, and uh, as we've seen it with other papers, uh, cutting back or folding up. Uh, um, there, there is no uh, independent media any longer to cover uh, the crimes of these uh, corporations. How's the claim process going? Do these people in Grand Isle, uh, obviously they don't speak for the entire state, but do they feel abandoned by not only their own state government, but the federal government as well? Yeah, well, we have to remember Kenneth Feinberg, who was the blood money uh, stalwart. <laughs> Uh, the guy who sold out the blood money uh, from uh, 9-11, uh, the Virginia Tech shooting, uh, uh, and a whole bunch of these other incidents where they pay people off, he was in charge of that, that uh, compensation fund. People down there have seen nothing. Uh, in the beginning, BP was throwing a lot of cash around to pay people to go out on the beach uh, in these hazmat suits to pick up uh, uh, dead uh, birds and, uh, you know, dead fish and, and pick up the tar balls and put them in these, these plastic bags. But um, that was in the beginning, and people were happy to have that money then. But now that it's two years later, CP is not throwing the money around any longer. Um, these people are now out of work. These people were fishermen. These people uh, did work in the tourism-related uh, uh, industry uh, down on the Gulf, and now they're, they've been left uh, high and dry uh, without any, uh, any, any kind of compensation uh, from BP, even to the point they can't even get their medical bills paid because of the influence that BP has over the entire uh, HMO, health insurance, uh, hospital, doctor uh, conundrum down in, uh, in, in Louisiana anyway, and I'm sure it's the same way in the other Gulf states. It's absolutely horrific to hear about this, and horrific that you have people like Bobby Jindel who can flaunt around saying that, oh, yes, the seafood's safe to eat, uh, absolutely everything's fine, no, the Justice Department's taking care of this, yet there are people suffering, losing their jobs, losing their health, 
and they're not getting anything uh, in any assistance. And that goes to show, not just in Louisiana, but all throughout the country, don't think the federal government, FEMA, or any of these agencies are going to help you because, clear example, uh, they're not going to do anything for you. Wayne, fire out your website, and what are some of the things that people can look for uh, from you coming up in the coming weeks? What are some of the things you're working on that uh, you want people to know about? Uh, it's WayneMatsonReport.com. That's all one uh, together. Uh, uh, W-A-Y-N-E-M-A-D-S-E-N uh, uh, Report.com. Uh, and um, I- I'm reporting right now on some huge schisms uh, in the Democratic Party leading up to the convention in Charlotte. Uh, 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 ma- many of the, 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 the old-time stalwart Democrats, including the labor uh, unions, are not happy that Obama did not go up to Wisconsin and campaign for uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Mayor Barrett of Milwaukee against uh, Scott Walker um, in the recall election, and uh, they're pointing to the fact that sh- the, the convention venue in Charlotte for the Democratic convention is being held in a non-union convention hall in a non-union city in a non-union state. Right to work uh, laws prevail uh, throughout, and uh, that seems to be the Democratic Party's message to its base the labor movement. Uh, don't be surprised. Labor does not show up in, in Charlotte. It may actually be out picketing. Fascinating stuff. You also have uh, an article about drones. The U.S. ramps up for drone wars, the rise of the machines in North and South America and Af- Africa. In just uh, about 30 seconds, uh, elaborate on that article quickly. Well, the Washington Post has a front page story, believe it or not, the Post today on the number of drone bases going in in Africa. They're proliferating all throughout the continent. We also know that U.S. Southern Command is going to use surplus drones from Afghanistan to start patrolling in South America. And, and today the State Department is expressing revulsion that Hugo Chavez, uh, president of Venezuela, says Venezuela is uh, producing its own drones. Well, uh, obviously he needs the means to defend himself. Fascinating stuff. Wayne Matson, WayneMatsonReport.com. I'm glad I can call this guy a friend. And, uh, folks, even when he's off, when he takes his journalism hat off, he is one, one funny guy. And, Wayne, I wish you nothing but the best. We'll keep in touch, and uh, you're going to have my prayers, my friend. Take care. You bet. Wayne Matson, thank you so much for coming on. We got about a